We want to talk to you today about taking back our freedom, but before we do that, we want to apologize for the little delay. They were supposed to be here by 10, but uh, you know, it doesn't matter because we have God here, amen? Yes. amen. Let's start with Luke 11.42, and let's read this together. Woe to you Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all other kinds of garden herbs. But you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Amen. This is Jesus talking to the Pharisees. And it's so important that we understand that justice and the love of God. Justice. Preserving justice is as important as sharing the love of God. Amen. You know, as we talk about freedom society, we have to, we, we, we can feel that we may not understand why it is we're focusing on freedom society. But when we look at the scripture, we, the scripture calls us to justice. That doesn't mean that we are self-righteous and that we are boasting in ourselves, but we are being used as God's instruments we're being used as God's hands to bring justice to the world. This is a justice not as we may normally think, like where we condemn people and things like that. But it's a justice where we stand up against evil. Amen? Stand up against tyranny, against oppression. These things are real in our world. The Bible talks about in Isaiah, where the Lord looked and was displeased. That there was no justice. Notice that God is displeased when there is injustice. When there is injustice, when people are oppressed, God is displeased. He saw that there was no one, and he was appalled that there was no one to intervene. Notice here, the scripture says God was appalled. He was angry, he was disgusted that there was no one to stand up against evil. The Bible says here, no one to intervene. Amen. Psalm, David talked about saying about, blessed are those who maintain justice, who fight for justice. And again, it's not the type of justice where we are just out there, we're, too, we're so holy, we can judge everybody else. But it's a type of justice where we stand up against bullies, stand up against evil, stand up against tyranny. Amen. And that's a very holy type of righteousness that the people of God need to have. Think about it, the people of God, Christianity, many of our churches around the world lost, we have lost this passion for justice. Almost like a learned helplessness, we've lost this passion to fight, stand up against bullies, stand up against oppressors, stand up for our rights, our human rights given by God. Isaiah 56 talks about the Lord saying, maintain justice and do what is right. Not for our own glory, not for our reward or merit badge. That is the wrong way to pursue justice. We do justice for God's glory. We do justice to bring God, joy to God and, and freedom to people. The Bible talks in Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says, do what is just and is right. Isaiah 61 again, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and love wrongdoing. In my faithless, I reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. The Lord says he loves justice. And so it's important for the, the Lord's people, the children of God, to understand what our Father loves. Amen? To understand that we also need to inherit that tradition of loving justice. Again, not to become self-righteous. That's missing the point completely. That's a trap we can fall into. But always remembering God's grace. Always remembering it's not because we did it, did some good deeds that we received His grace, but it's because of His love that we received His grace. When we're empowered by that humility and grace, then we can move forward into justice, really seeking justice for others. Amen? Deuteronomy talks about, and Deuteronomy has many, many, many about justice, follow justice and justice alone. Deuteronomy 16, 19, 20. 
Job, for the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Isaiah, learn to do right. Seek justice. Hebrews 11.33, it talks about the faith of the prophets going from Adam and then to Abraham and then to Moses all the way through saying that God uses the people of faith to administer justice on the world. In other words, the people of faith become God's hands to administer justice in the world. That's what Freedom Society is all about. Amen? Amen. We have to reinvigorate Christianity. People of faith who know and have a relationship with God to understand, hey, it's not only about prosperity. It's not only about God wanting to help you make finances and make big money. God wants us to be blessed, but it's also about us learning how to be like God, to seek what He loves, and to help others be free from tyranny. You know, one of the things that I think Freedom Society is so powerful, we understand the true positions of the nations. We understand who are the real players. If the people of God are represented by Adam and Eve, represented by the citizens, who are to be the citizen servants? Who are to be the civil public servants? The government. The government is supposed to be our servant. And many people may feel we're talking too much politics, but this is very important for us to understand. As Pericles said, you, we may not have an interest in politics, but politics will have an interest in you when it's necessary. They, they're going to use you, use you on a race basis, on an ethnicity basis, use you on a political basis to do terrible things like erode your freedoms like take away our rights. And so we have to be vigilant as a children of God and be aware of this. I think God can use a small condition, a small conditional offering to change the world. Amen? Yes, we're, being, we're being persecuted. We're being persecuted. We're being harangued. We're being told, you, why are you... You guys always talked about spiritual things. Why don't you why talk about politics? We could say the same thing about Father. In every speech, he would be saying, FBI, CIA, I know you're here watching me. <laughs> Father knew who the real players were. He knew who was behind the scenes. He knew the proper position of our danger. That is not to be the master. It is to be the servant of the citizens. We see that if, if America doesn't stand, God is going to use someone else. God is going to use someone else. He's not tied to America. God created the whole world. He can use whoever He pleases at the right providential time to enact His justice and His glory. Amen? Amen. America is becoming so sucked up into the globalist agenda, into the, into the consolidationist agenda. You know, forgetting our rights, losing, just giving them up because it's trendy and maybe popular and stars and Hollywood stars are doing it. So without thinking, we're giving it away. And God will not use that type of people. Amen? He needs people who are vigilant, who are watching the archangel, who know the enemy's movements. And what's so amazing is I believe God is using a small condition that we're doing here as a small group just like God used a small condition of faith of Moses or when they battled the, the different armies, that a small group of 200 could defeat 10,000 if we stood with God. And I believe that all the foundation Father made in South America, almost preparing that nation to become the second Eden. Remember with the Jardine Project and Paraguay Project, all these kind of things that made no sense to us when he was doing them. We can now see the seeds are starting to bloom in an incredible way. Mexico, the most oppressed, the peoples are brilliant, they're beautiful, they're, they, they have so much inherent talent, so about three times the natural resources of America, and they are squashed. They are being brutalized. They are being stomped on by bullies and evil demons, basically. Amen. Drug cartels, in particular, the Knights Templar drug cartel is stomping on the people. And we see something extraordinary happening 
finally in Mexico. The good people of faith draw the line in the sand and say, we are sick and tired of you raping us, violating us, stepping on our faces, and we will stand against you. The people of Mexico are standing up. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. It's great. We salute you, Mexico. A new 1776 is blooming in Mexico. Americans have so far forgotten what it takes to keep freedom. Father didn't raise us to be jellyfish, amen. He raised us to be fighters, protectors of the world, avatars, tribal messiahs. Amen. That's how Father raised us. And God bless the Mexicans because for the first time these ranchers, these humble people, hard-working lime grove pickers, ranchers, farmers, they're saying enough is enough. We are sick and tired of being taxed by you, drug cartels. Look at this. One man said, explains how the lime growers, these farmers, are taxed by the metrics including acreage. Limes harvested in crates packaged taxed. Meager wages of the lime pickers are taxed, along with the bus rides are taxed. Gang members tax sacks of corn, tortillas, all taxed. When you're putting a floor in your house, you'll have a gang member show up and say, give me the money. You'll have a, a, a man at a restaurant said the cartel began taking cuts from his coins in the jukebox, in the music box. And not only that, see, people will, people will tolerate, it's amazing how much people will tolerate without standing up for their rights. It's amazing how much they'll be stepped on and stomped on before they actually start fighting it back against you. It's kind of sad, but it's amazing. Yes. Not in a good way. They are being totally stomped on, and this was the breaking point. This is one man talking. They kidnapped my sisters. They tried to kill my wife, my children, and when they started going into the schools and taking baby girls, 11 and 12 year old, that was my breaking point. Selling these children into child prostitution, raping them, drug cartels. And we have almost in a religious sphere. We don't even want to talk about this. We don't want to think that it is. Just think happy thoughts, happy thoughts. There's real evil in the world. There's real Satan's in the world. And they need to be challenged. They need to be put exposed. Amen. This is the problem of our churches and our mosques and our temples today. Good seeking, God seeking religious people don't stand up against evil. We just have become taken over by the trendy pacifist philosophies. That's exactly what the Archangel wants from us. What's so amazing about this is that the people said, enough is enough, you're not going to steal our babies anymore. You come and do that, you are going to die. We're going to kill you. They said it straight. And they not only said it, they started picking up slingshots. Can you believe it? Slingshots. Hunting rifles. They had nothing but their courage. What heroes. And then they started destroying the drug cartels. This has been going on for about a year. It's amazing. They've been fighting this on their hills, on their lime grove hills, like brave patriots fighting, killing, and dying to stand up for their freedom. And it's amazing because for the first time, the government has now recognized their success. They're actually very embarrassed about it because the government could not do anything to stop the drug cartels because, as everybody knows, they run the drug cartels in Mexico. And the generals run the drug cartel. That's how they fund their mistresses and their mansions and all this ridiculous corruption. And the people know this. And they were fed up with being bullied and brutalized. And they said, you Satan, Archangel, no more will you ravage our children. I want to give it up one time for those Mexican farmers. Those are that's real humanity. That is humanity. You see, real humanity doesn't want to pick a fight. But if you push 
us into a corner and drive us against the cage, we will come out swinging because we are good. Amen. Because we want to stand up for our families. We're not jellyfish that you can just stomp into the ground. Amen. It's amazing. The government is embarrassed. Archangel is embarrassed. He has to now demand, okay guys, we'll let you guys have your weapons. You can, uh, you can register them with us. For the first time in Mexican history, this has happened. First time ever. The Second Amendment is born. Mexicans are now realizing, we the people, citizens have the power. We bring the rule of law. We bring peace and unity. We bring, you know, tranquility to our towns. It's not the government that does that. It's not our angel. We the people do it. And claiming that courage, claiming that right, and owning it, is what makes these bullies scared. Look at them. They were attacking the drug, uh, the uh, farmers with weaponized cars, armored vehicles, driving onto these lime groves and to the neighborhoods the, and the incredibles and the barrios with these militarized tanks. Now the people said, we're not going to tolerate it. They, are, they even got illegal guns, called illegal guns from America. 50 caliber rifles or whatever, you know, big things. And just demolished these drug cartels. They banded together out of free association to stand up against evil. And they won. Of course, they're now saying, join us. We will give you uniforms and we will give you badges and give you permission to be that. Most of them, some of them are saying, okay, we'll do that. But others are saying, like this man here, everyone is afraid that the government will make a deal and the cartel will come back for revenge. I guarantee you that will happen if you give it up to the archangel. We don't have an honest government, says Heriberto Sanchez. Look at the UN Organization of Drug and Crime. Listing the countries based on murder rates. The, the ones at the top have the lowest murder rates. The ones at the bottom have the most. And guess what? Guess who's very near the bottom? There's Mexico right there. Tremendous potential. Tremendous genius the people down there. Totally oppressed. All disarmed. Bullies happy. Criminals happy. Bully everybody you want. 27 199 plus murders a year. They are living in such a dangerous place. Not the blue line, the, the next line over. Only uh, overpassed by Brazil and India. Think how much father invested in these countries. In South America. See, what's amazing is that maybe God is using Mexico, the oppressed people of Mexico, starting from honest farmers and line pickers who are standing up courageously for freedom. And if that spreads, that's spreading through Mexico, if that spreads throughout South America, and people start waking up and saying, hey, we can bring the law of the land home. We own this country. Archangel promised us for 30 years, no result. All we have is drug cartels, all we have is gangs ruling our land, all we have is our women and children kidnapped. We take our nations back. If that spreads throughout Central America, goes to Panama, and goes to the, the South America, where it goes to Colombia and Argentina and Uruguay and, and Brazil, my God, think about it. South America will be the center of the province. It will be the place from which the ideal peace of the world comes, where no more good people will stand lifeless before bullies. And we need that in this world. We need the people of faith to become strong in the power of God. Seek after His justice. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> I'm like, you want to say something? I'm going to shut up. Now, um, yes, you as we know, I was born and raised in South Korea. And I love my country. I love my country landscape. I love my country's culture, food, and language, everything about Korea. I'm not saying Korea is perfect, but as I love to parents more, the love for the nation got deeper. So when I when I went to college and I took this course, 
world uh, history. And in that textbook, it says that the Korea, throughout the Korean history, the Korea it was a, in the best state of China. And, and then I was very deeply offended by the <laughs> words. That's why the sentence, Korea is the, Korea is the best state of China. That's not true. Korea was an independent country throughout the whole history. And I was very, very angry at the, at the textbook, right? <laughs> And some of you may have watched the Korean history drama. Actually, Korea always had to pay tax, tax to China throughout the whole history. Whether it's Joseon Dynasty, whether it's the Korea Dynasty, whatever dynasty they had, they had to pay tax. And whenever their king changed, whenever Korea Dynasty changed, they had to actually report to China and get approval that they changed their king, they changed dynasty. So, you know, hard to admit. <laughs> But it is, it is true that Korea was actually the best state of China. In Korea, you know, even when they, uh, they were under 40 years of Japanese occupation, and then the, they, they, of course, made an effort to free their country. They made a temporary government in Shanghai. They made a one three uh, independent movement. And, and they, they made an effort, but yet, the, the very thing that freed, made Korea independent was actually America. America, by America dropping bomb, nuclear bomb in Japan, Nagasaki, in Hiroshima, and Japan surrendered. That's why Korea was free, basically, as you, some of you may know. So Korea had this history of being violated by many, many different countries. Some say it was um, over 900 times it was invaded throughout the history. So when I think about Korea, what, what is so great about Korea, right? Korea has worth nothing if we don't have a Messiah. Because Messiah came from that country. I, even as a Korean, can love Korea. So when I see Mexico who are standing up for their life, right, and fighting back to archangelic power, that's actually an amazing thing, and get an approval from uh, uh, their oppressor, that you know you can have the Second Amendment. That's just an amazing accomplishment, amazing accomplishment to the to, to to obtain their freedom and liberty back. And you know what I believe? I don't know which country you came from, but I believe that true parents, true father came and put the, all the seeds for your each of your country. The, the, the seed of lineage, yes. seed of love in your country, yes. so that they can stand up for bullying, against the bully and against the tyranny. Because of true parents' love, it's so amazing that we can bring our freedom back. We can have the strength to stand up against the bully, and we can go find the We need to pray for Mexico and all brothers and sisters down there. We hope they're involved in that. We salute those brave souls, uh, those farmers. I mean, they're farmers. They're amazing. They are heroes. They are the George Washington and Thomas Jeffersons of our modern age. They're the only ones doing it, standing up, because they've been just driven in the ground so horribly. We pray that Mexico and South America tap their potential. Hey, who knows? That may spread throughout the whole world because it starts with somebody. Somebody has to stop stand up against the rules. I saw this wonderful article, I think Pierre sent it to me, beautiful article, on how personal relationships threaten the power of the state or the archangel. Brilliant article. Going into why the family is targeted by the globalists, by the federalists, by the statists, by the consolidationists, they're targeted. We talked about, even last week, we saw a couple of weeks ago, we saw the post by Julian Huxley, UNESCO, the UN's educational scientific uh, uh, organization, cultural organization. Remember the first founder, the first head of their UNESCO? Remember what he was saying? Talking about the families being the problem of bringing of the biggest impediment to bringing 
what they call the New World Order? Families are the biggest problem because they create injurious effects on their children. You see, he knows, he knows families need to be broken up. Look at this. This is a, a University of Maryland sociologist who writes, is the family a barbaric, pre-modern holdover institution perpetuating irrational relations and inherited forms of inequality? Wow, they're so smart. I'm so impressed by your rhetoric. I'm not impressed. What is he saying? Using this idea of inequality to perpetuate more inequality. Why? Because whenever the state gets in control historically, the elites are free from all the, they're exempt from all the taxes, exempt from everything, and the people are oppressed. Look at another British professor of philosophy saying, claiming, the family is one of the main causes of morally arbitrary inequality. The effects of the family are so profound that its mere existence may severely impede the access of individuals to equal life chances. She suggests that everyone could be better off if raised in a well-run state orphanage. Well, that would work really well for the Nazis. That would work really well for the Nazi children. Child Swap Society, author Sandra Feldman, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, fantasizes about a society where all parenting is done through state-controlled lotteries, solving the problems of inequality. Who knows whose children you will get out of the state lottery? Emory University, Martha Feynman, feminist legal theorist, talks about advocating the end of family autonomy and privacy in much of her work, including the 2004 book, Autonomy Myth. She calls for the abolishing of all state-sanctioned marriage and replacing it with a scheme that requires all parties to draw contracts regulated by the state. Yes, when the Archangel does it, he does it so better. So much better, right, everybody? We can trust him with our children. We can trust the Archangel with our lives. Look what happens in history when the people do that. You see, they don't address the real issue of isolationism, of alienation, of depression, of anxiety that's created because we don't have strong relationships. They don't want to talk about that. Because strong human relationships are the most powerful force in the universe. Amen? They are the nuclear bomb against tyranny. Powerful relationships are the weapon against tyranny, against evil. See, all tyrants know this because when you control a personal relationship, you can control anything. This author gives an example of the, what she calls, quote, the 12-year-old queen bees trying to boss everybody around on the middle school playground, or the big world stage Stalin and Kim Il-sung, he mentions, Hitler, whatever. They all know the same thing. You've got to tear apart human relationships. And the key of that is the family. It is a strong husband, it is a strong wife, and our healthy, strong children. That is a threat to tyranny. That is a threat to bullies. Amen? Think about it. Our family is almost like a little army. It's a powerful force. Think about it. It's like the state, when the archangel looks at our families and they're strong, he sees like a group of samurais. And he has to disband that. He has to get rid of that group. Got to cut up and divide that group. Because they may be able to challenge him. Amen? And this is what they understand. The globalists understand that people who push for world government, who want to control the whole world through a pyramid system of elitism, from everywhere down to these academics calling for more state intervention, all of it is the same. All of it is the same. Attacking our powerhouses. 
attacking our true power, attacking our strong relationships, which change lives and the world. Amen. Look at this, because only weakened human relationships and alienation can serve to build a culture of distrust and the divisions of class, gender, race. They can play us off on races. They can play us off on ethnicity. They can play us off on culture. They can play us off on this and that and that and this and gender. Everything to divide and conquer the population to social engineer it. When the people have strong marriages, when we have strong families, we don't need that we don't need that temptation. We get our joy from our life. We get our joy from our children. We get our joy from unlocking our genetics together and being empowered and strong. We got our real good drugs, not the power good drugs that they're trying to give you. We got the real Holy Ghost drugs like he's talking about. By enabling a culture of excess in which self-absorption and self-indulgence reign supreme, power elites seem invested in guaranteeing our problems will be self-reinforcing and self-correcting. Don't fight. There's no point. You're gonna be destructive. You're gonna, your families are gonna collapse. Your families are gonna be torn apart. Don't fight it. Just accept your fate. This is a message I gave you. No, well, you know, lime growers in Mexico can stand and say, out of my body or with you, my friend, because I don't want to hear this anywhere near here. We have the power of God in our human relationships. We don't need your gifts. We don't need, think about it. When our powers are empowered, by what, we, what we're talking about, air bending, standing up activism, standing up like for freedom. We're talking about fire bending, understanding the Second Amendment. Like these lime grows in Mexico. Think about it, when our children are water benders as well, they are healthy and not addicted to you know, SSRIs and drugs and the, the medication that Big Pharma gives them. And earth benders as well, we know, we know how to make abundance with food and water. We don't need welfare. We don't need anything from the state. We have power in ourselves. We have power in our families. We have power in our community. We have power. We the people own this land. We bring the freedom to the world. Amen. And it's about time that God's people wake up to our mission. We have to stand for justice. It's not enough to watch passively from the sidelines. We are getting, we get threats. I mean, we get, you know, just speaking out aloud about this in public. We know we're being watched. We know we're being, uh, you know, the NSA is on us, whatever. If you even voted for Ron Paul, the NSA has you on a list. Give me a break. We are not gonna stand passively and see America be robbed and ravaged by savages. We will stand. The people of God are beginning to wake up. People of God, like the Mexico line grow, grow, are starting to get fed up. And we want peace. We don't want a war. We don't want violence. We want to settle this with words. We want to settle this with passion, with love for our country, for our neighbors, with justice and liberty for all. We want to settle it in the right way because we're good. And we have the moral high. Amen?
And think about it, always our answer that we are the answer. We'll provide you stability. We'll provide you protection. We'll provide you welfare, security, welfare. But is that really true? When children see their husband, their, their father and mother are loving together, strong together, marching more together, then that gives us stability. That gives us security. That gives us protection, spiritual protection to our children. And when we, Prabhupada always uh, taught us that, you know, core position foundation, right? That through the God, there's a husband and wife and their children. And we all know, in order for this core position foundation to be established, God always has to be at the center. God's, without God's love, there's no point of even making that, right? But when we see the, this, this four position foundation diagram in a, in a uh, physical manifestation, manifestation Husband and wife is at the center. I saw too many families. Husband and wife, individually, they love God so much. They love true parents so much. Husband and wife, individually, they love their children so much. But husband and wife relationship doesn't work out and the four position foundation collapses. I'm not saying that's the end of the, uh, you know, holding the family. But it takes more effort, three times, triple times effort, to bring the children back to God. That's why God emphasizes the whole position foundation. And Satan exactly knows where to attack, too. That's why Satan always been attacking the, 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 the absolute marriage, absolute sex marriage in our family by saying, oh, we need to have a sexual liberation and free sex and homosexuality. And that's why bad sex is everywhere. That is why. Satan always wants to, always want to attack with God the most precious. So, you know, husbands, you guys need to have a confidence in your sexuality for your wife. And why? Need to have a confidence in their sexuality. Yeah. Or your husband. Right? Remember uh, a year ago I talked about this. Instead of uh, uh, saying the nine kiss to your spouse on their cheeks or on, on his lips, you know, have a good night kiss to their sexual organ. It's a holy place. Ooh. I don't even know about that. Children, 
have such a lovely family. Yes. And let's remember his name. Amen. He doesn't want that. Strong relationships, he wants them to show. Yes. We're not gonna let him do it. Okay, let's take a chance again, 139. Human beings should enjoy the highest relationship with God. God's joy was to begin by finding a starting point from which he could begin a journey in happiness with human beings, heading toward infinity and eternity. Let's help God on that journey.